Building computers in Minecraft is hard, but what if instead you put all the energy into only creating one app? Discord is known and used worldwide as one of the most convenient texting apps out there. With Discord, you could do a lot of things, like make friends, join servers, and also leak the Pentagon secret documents onto a Minecraft server. <laughs> So that's why I wanted to see if it was possible to build a computer inside of Minecraft that could run Discord, only using the command blocks that are found within the game itself. But about a week ago, all this didn't exist. So here we are in the beginning, and the first thing I did was make this crappy computer monitor for the screen to go on to. You're, you're gonna have to believe me when I say that this is, um, only temporary. <laughs> the reason I built this terrible template here is so I at least have a sense of a screen to work off of. But before I could do literally anything else, I want to give this computer a cursor. And honestly, I think this might be a little hard, but the way I want to do this is to make the cursor that's in Minecraft the cursor on the computer. And for it to go wherever I look. So with that, I began working on my command blocks, and because in this video we're working on a cool PC thing, I, I decided to put them all inside a PC case. Very fitting, I know, so I then put that inside of a pond of water because that was the only space next to the monitor that made sense. It's a masterpiece. Okay, so now I set it up, so if you walk onto this die right here, then it then spawns an armor sand for the cursor, and you can see it moves where I look. But there's one issue. You can see, if I step away from the die right and pause it, you see, there's a actually a huge gap between the cursor and the screen, which is, uh, not good. This is actually because if I'm here and the screen is there, and I make an armor sand always be exactly 53 blocks away from where I'm looking, and I turn, it actually begins to draw a circle sphere thing with the 53 block radius around where I am, instead of saying flat again against the screen. This is because squares and circles are not the same shape. And if I wanted to stay up against the screen, I have to try something different. So the idea I made to counter this is to create a new armor stand called Cursor 2. I then made this armor stand steal the XY cords from the first armor stand that draws the sphere circle thing, but it forces its Z axis to be stuck against the screen, removing its third dimension. And this is exactly what that looks like. <laughs> this looks so stupid. <laughs> Very intriguing results. But there's still one issue with this. The cursor could just fly off the monitor. So to fix this, I made a rule for cursor 2, the one against the monitor, that if it detects that there's no block negative 1z behind it, then it knows to kill itself, because then it's off the monitor. But I gotta say, it looks a, a teeny bit stupid with just two armor stands flying around in front of a computer monitor. So what I could do now is make both the armor stands invisible, but also give the one that connects to the screen a player head. I just have to find one. Minecraft head finder cursor. This is the only head that looks like a cursor. What? Whatever, it'll work. See if it works. Wait a minute. That is not the head that I want. Who, who are you? What even, who even is this? I don't want you. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm probably just better off searching the large catalog of heads they have on this website. Like, boom, L look at this head. Boy. <laughs> yes, yes, this will work. Yeah. <laughs> yep, it, it works. <laughs> it's a miracle. You can actually see where the cursor is on the screen now. Y you just gotta ignore the fact that it's actually just a boy's head scraping against the screen, but whatever. Oh, oh, and check this out. Hey, it works too. <laughs> okay, so now for clicking, I have a quite quirky idea on how we're going to be able to achieve it. So in Minecraft, there's this... this so in Minecraft, there's a statistic- oh, oh my god, that's hard to say. There's a statistic called sneak time, and what I could do is make a scoreboard that tracks that statistic called click. Then to test it, I use a command block to see if anyone's click score is higher than 1, and if so, in chat it says, ah, which works. And then above that, I could reset the click score for the person that just executed whatever they want to execute. So now if I crouch, it should only execute once, and- yes, okay, that works. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing ever, but now I have to connect it. So now what I'm thinking for buns is I could actually go behind the screen and remove the back of the monitor so now we have an exposed back which is good and what we could do is we could grab a few random blocks like magma and behind each pixel of the screen where i want a function to be i could place a random specific block there this will make sense later for now i'm just going to fill the entire typing bar with magma so now whenever i click instead of going ah it should now clone the block negative two blocks behind the cursor two armor sand over to this spot here okay so now if i control the mouse over here on the screen and then click yeah Oh, yes, sir. Okay, there's magma over there. That's perfect. And if I click to this other spot here, it should replace it with packed ice. Yep, okay. The reason I cloned the block over to here is because what we could actually do is run some redstone through it to activate a bunch of command blocks over here to identify which block actually just got cloned over. And then from there, we could just make it do whatever instructions the buttons told it to do. So let's say an ice block got cloned over there.
there. It then activates this line of command blocks, which does the instructions for a split second, then removes the ice itself so it could reset. So each little appearance of a block here counts as a click. And with this, I could just continue this concept for every single button I want to do. I just have to add a code block behind it. I decided to call it code block because it sounds cool. So I began working on the first instructions to get ready to type. But first, before I explain what I'm trying to do, you know how on Discord, before you're able to actually type, you must click this gray bar here at the bottom, and then it does this weird blink flash thing, and then you're able to type. So what I did to replicate this in Minecraft is if you click the bottom bar here, then it pushes these two pistons up, connecting the redstone from this physical timer to these command blocks, which alternates the changing blocks on the typing bar. And if you wish to stop typing, you must click somewhere else on the screen, like this air or this picture button down here, which literally just says picture at the moment because we haven't gone to that. But now comes the complicated actual part of this, typing. Of course it's typed. So I began by setting up till at 3 a.m. building a keyboard to go underneath the screen. And I recorded it all thinking this time lapse would be oh so cool and quirky, but no, right when I was about to finish, this happened. I tried adding a layer slabs over the keyboard because I thought it'd make it look pretty, but when I was slash filling, I forgot to add the replace air part, which ended up destroying the entire keyboard. I didn't have a backup either, so uh, I ended up doing what any wise person would do, and instead of going to bed, I decided to rebuild the entire dang keyboard. Hey, it's a miracle, I'm done. <laughs> I went to bed after that. <laughs> oh, quick common question, by the way. Uh, g -g -g how are you going to be able to control the keyboard while you're on the block? Well, obviously, I just made another cursor just for the dang keyboard. And also, what's neat is I made it so it only appears when you're actually ready to type. But now, because we actually have a cursor for the keyboard, we can actually do the same thing that we did with the screen, which is remove the backside of the keyboard and plant down a bunch of code blocks for each one of the keys. And because so whenever I click on a key, the code block underneath it gets into a new examination spot. Then I went ahead and recreated every single keyboard character standing up next to one another inside the random computer spot. It may not look like it, but each one of these white splooges here are actually letters and characters. I could then tie it in so each code block underneath the keyboard represents the character that's above it. Then I hooked it up so whenever a key is pressed, it adds plus one score to a typing scoreboard and removes one square whenever you click backspace so each letter comes after one another on the screen. So now whenever a block is cloned over, it determines what letter was typed based on which block appears. Then it figures out where to place it based on how high the typing scoreboard is at. Because each typing score has a different location on the screen, maxing out at 14 because that's the max amount you can type in one line. Once it's determined that, then it clones over each character from within the white character blob area over the screen, so that you can now finally type letters and do backspaces and space bars and... Oh, by the way, did I mention that you could also type letters? You know, I thought this typing part was going to be easy, but no, it ended up taking 831 command blocks alone. Now the only button that doesn't work on the keyboard is the enter button, because that is the button that actually sends the message. You see, when you send a message on real Discord, there are three things that happen simultaneously. First, every chat from here to here get pushed upwards, hiding the section above it. Then it puts the text that you just typed up onto the new free made space underneath all the previous text, along with your profile picture. And then after all that, then it sends it to the other computer screen that you were just typing to. But to do this in Minecraft, first I have to make another computer screen, so I'm just going to clone the other screen over to here. Yes, this is very, very far away from the original screen. Just, just don't mind that I also clone over the text over to the screen. I don't mind that. Why did I type this is an N? What? So if I'm able to fit this many lines on a screen, I should be able to clone this part and this part over to here. Should be simple enough. Just to see if it works, I'll place a line here and... The source and destination areas cannot overlap. Thank you, Mojang. New plan. Change a few numbers. Okay, so what I'm going to do is instead of cloning all on the same screen, I'm going to instead put another screen behind the original screen. And it's going to do all the cloning text stuff over here. And then it's going to clone it back to the original screen and then over to the other monitor. This is already getting ridiculous. Okay, so I set up this little module here, which goes through each step. And it does the thing that the thing is supposed to do. And then... 
and then it works. Okay, no, scrap that. That was a terrible explanation. Going into replay mod so you could actually see what's going on. So when you hit enter, it clones the entire front side of the screen behind itself, and then clones the great typing box also behind the screen. So then from there, it clones a profile picture found on this part of the screen on the front over to where the text is, and also cleans up the gray wool, turning it into gray concrete. Then it clones this final result back screen over to the front of the typing monitor and the receiving monitor. Also, it resets the typing score with thing to zero and clears what was just typed on the typing bar. And all of this happens in just a fraction of a second. Nice. But now, if you advert your gaze over to the side here, you'll see how my profile picture here is actually just pure blue, which is quite inaccurate to real Discord. Where over on Discord, people have profile pictures more like... <laughs> What I can do though is make a 3x3 canvas where you could actually paint the profile picture that you want onto the big screen. My technology is sadly limited by its time. <laughs> So what I can do is put some code blocks behind your profile spot here, making it into a button. And then I could go a few additional blocks behind this screen to make an edit profile screen that will be cloned over to the main screen when selected. I'm gonna have to do all the work on this screen in this cramped little area, oh my god. I bet it'll look fine. Yeah. Over here is where I'm gonna make the 3x3 box canvas where you can individually select squares that you wanna edit for your profile picture. Then over here make a rainbow variety of blocks that you could put into the squares. And what I could do behind each one of the canvas square things here is put an individual code block for the examination spot so it knows that a square is being selected. And then behind the gradients, I'm gonna put another random code block so it knows that the gradients are being selected. That probably sounded like a bunch of random nonsense. It's okay, it'll make sense in a moment. Wow, I'm getting really close to the camera. Blech. Okay, so I did some magic. Uh, look at this. Check this out. Ah, uh, nice. And then I could go over here and click this and it returns. Very cool. The next thing I did was graph selection. So you see here in the 3x3 canvas, it's blue right now because my profile picture all the way down there is also just set to blue. And if I want to edit a piece of it, if I select it, then it puts a ring around it. And also, if you check the scoreboard I made, you'll see my profile picture score was also updated to 5. That's because the piece I just selected was actually the fifth piece of the canvas, going up to 8 if we count 0. This will be useful later. And what's neat is the reason I'm allowed to swap this ring thing from one piece to another is because if we actually look at it before we swap the ring, it first cleans out the entire graph by replacing any previous glowstone to white concrete. Then it adds the glowstone ring to the spot that was just selected, allowing a clean transition. But now that all the pieces of the canvas can be selected, now we need to find a way to put the this to there. My solution for this is because although there are 72 colors for you to choose from, I made them all share just one code block behind it. Calcite. So what happens is if the color gradients are clicked, then it does a typical thing where it clones the calcite over to the examination spot. But then this command block picks it up and then sends it over to these nine command blocks which trying to code huh? what the current profile picture score is at. Which, as I said a moment ago, is basically which piece of the canvas it knows to fill in. Once it realizes which canvas piece to fill in, then it gets sent to these nine rows of command blocks. Which essentially what they do is they execute at where the mouse is on the screen. And whatever block is negative 0.3z of the cursor on the screen gets cloned over to the selected graph spot. 16 times so it could fill in the entire selected square. So with that, now you could easily edit the profile picture into whatever you want. But you see that save button I put way down there. Uh it doesn't do a save. So by setting the code block behind it to amethyst, I can begin building the instructions for the button. Which basically what I'm doing is if you hit save, it clones the top left block of each box over to the profile picture. And let's give it a test. Oh, okay, drag the cursor to the save and how did I mess that up? Attempt to and yes, there we go. It saves. Okay. Now if I head back to chat and type a sample message, hit enter and yes. Okay. My profile picture is there. Oh, it's also on the delivery monitor too. That's sick. Oh, I'm so glad that works. Okay. Now the last thing I need to fix is the Pikachu button. A cool way I could do this is to go back here and make another screen, but this screen is actually going to be a mini pop-up screen where you could draw images and then send them. Put a big fat canvas here and then steal the color graph from the profile picture screen. Listen, I'm not lazy. I just don't want to build another color graph. Okay, maybe I'm being a little lazy. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, I'll add new colors, white and black. <laughs> upgrades, people, upgrades. Okay, so what I can do to make it look flashy is if you want to activate it, it pushes all the previous text up, only altering this front screen. So if you want to cancel, it restores it and puts the text back down. But now I should probably explain what my plan is. What my plan is with this menu is if you pick a color or colors, then you could go over to this canvas and begin drawing whatever degenerate thing comes to your mind. Then once you're done, you can send it off to the other monitor. Okay, cool, cool. Now it's time to actually work. I first made it so when you click on a color using the same methods as a profile picture, I made it so it clones the color that you want over to this corner though. <laughs> 
Why, you may ask? Uh, because it's out of the way. Unimportant. Now let me continue. So what I can do is make a clone whatever block is inside this corner over to where I'm drawing on the canvas when I'm crouched. I think I could actually do this because the crouch I'm clicking that I coded earlier actually just keeps going the longer I'm crouched. But unlike the buttons from earlier that just reset the score to zero whenever it's done, I can probably make it so as long as you stay crouched and it should continue drawing whatever block is inside the corner over to the canvas. Okay, test one. Oh, oh, it's already drawing? Oh, hold on, it's already working. Okay, but what if I switch colors and then draw? Uh, no, that's not what I want. Select, draw. It's not letting me switch. Attempt to select, draw. Oh, it's doing something. Can I switch colors? Uh, uh yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> So this, so this does work, it's just, uh, it's drawing dots instead of lines, so... <laughs> Attempt 4. Oh, hold on, this looks consistent. Seems to be drawing very well. Can I go off the page? Oh, no, it doesn't allow that. That's good. Let's try a different color. Mmm, the paint is painting. Yep, okay. It actually feels pretty smooth to play with, which is nice. Okay, hold on, look at this beauty. This is art right here. Beautiful. Now I, <laughs> now I just gotta send it over. So what we can do is by taking this old back screen and then clone it over to the old messaging screen, make that into the first step, then fill the rest of this back screen to gray concrete, also turning that into a step, and then cloning this magnificent art to the back too. Set that as the next step, then that should be about it. I, I really hope this works first try, because if it doesn't, literally everything will break. Also, don't mind the cursor head, my, my internet's out. Oh boy, am I, am I really about to do this? Nah, I'm too much of a coward, I'm making a backup. Okay, totally unreversible, first attempt, three, two, one... Oh, did it- oh, oh, never mind. Wait, is that all it did? Back up. Mistakes were made and, uh, <laughs> mistakes were fixed. Look, boom, flawless now, beautiful. And from there, you could just continue to spam whatever you want to the other computer. <laughs> Honestly, it is so satisfying just browsing this Discord replica after I built it all. Also, uh, you know how in the beginning of the video I said, uh, so here we are in the beginning, and the first thing I did was make this crappy computer monitor for the screen to go on to. You're, you're gonna have to believe me when I say that this is, um, only temporary. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I lied. <laughs> this terrible monitor stand and floating monitor over there is the best you're gonna get because it's sick. Anyways, if you enjoyed any of this, and I, I mean, look at this beauty. You can actually download and play this world using the world download link on my Discord and the announcer channel. Links in description. Also, I would very much appreciate if you were to subscribe. Please, 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 please.